What's going on, smart people? Today we're doing something a little bit fun. I googled physics trivia game, and it brought me to this website, and we're going to do a couple physics quizzes. We're going to see how I do. Um, I'm pretty confident in this. I did a couple of them already, but I, I just realized that they were average scored. So I think they were kind of meant to get me a little overconfident so that I would have the confidence to make a video of it and then embarrass myself. Um, but no, I'm pretty confident in this stuff. I think my problem-solving skills are uh, good. <laughs> um, one of the things that is probably going to hurt me, and I am not looking forward to that because it's going to be a video, is I don't know the names of things. So if they ask for certain experiment names or certain people... Uh, anyways, let's get started. We're getting started with the tough one because it has the most uh, plays, it looks like. So let's do this. Elementary quantum mechanics. Feel free to take this for yourself. I'll leave a link to this website in the description. Let's get started. Uh, yeah, let's do the single page quiz. It gives you an option to do like a timed quiz, but uh, that sounds stressful. I already took the physics GRE. He said all matter in motion was has a wave-like nature. Oh boy. Thompson, that's the guy who discovered the electron. Planck, de Broglie, and Schrodinger. That's tricky. Because, alright, thought process. Brainstorm. Schrodinger... I mean, his equation technically isn't a wave equation because it's only first order in time, so it's more like a diffusion equation. But it's called it's a wave function. But De Broglie, De Broglie kind of founded that whole like pilot wave theory of quantum mechanics. So he was very team wave. I'm gonna say De Broglie. Someone is probably commenting right now, telling me how much of an idiot I am. And, um, you know what, Mom? I don't appreciate it. His theory simplified. His theory simplified was that the electrons in the atom move in precisely determined orbits. Alf Bow. Alf Bow is that uh, way of shortcutting electron configuration. Hertz, um, founder of Donuts. Hertz Donut, that was terrible. Uh, Bohr, it's Bohr. Well, yeah, it's Bohr. What Greek letter is used to denote frequency? It's the little V. So it's not phi. What is it called? Little V. Kappa, it's not, so process of elimination. It's not kappa. It's not lambda, it's nu. Yeah, oh, that's what that's called. Oh god. If you have light of 5,500 angstroms, what color is it? Well. Uh, <laughs> let's see, so an angstrom is, what is it? The, the size scale of an angstrom is about on the same order as the size of an atom, right? Or the radius of an atom. So that's about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So 5,500 times uh, 10 to the minus 10. That's going to be something on the order of 10 to the minus 6. That doesn't really help me. I might have done that math wrong. That sounds kind of high, though. So I don't think it's yellow. I want to say blue. I really don't know, though. Might be the first one we got wrong. Uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that it is impossible to accurately and simultaneously determine which properties of fast moving particles. Principle and secondary quantum numbers, position in quanta, position in momentum, electrostatic attraction. It's position in momentum, but really it extends to more than that. It extends to observables that don't commute, or rather, uh, the the how do you want to say that? I guess the operators that don't commute that are associated with that observable. So normally you have an operator that 
acts on the wave function or acts on some state and it spits out the wave function again and some eigenvalue and that eigenvalue is typically the observable and if you have some state and two operators that uh, commute with each other on, with that same state that means that you can make measurements on those observables at the same time ones that are notorious ones that you notor notoriously cannot do that with are the position and momentum operator you get a factor of ih bar in there uh, might be minus ih bar I don't remember but anyways it's that <laughs> the principal quantum number is represented by what variable n n for principal Uh, which of the following is an actual name for a quark? A screwball? That would be a great name. Middle, <laughs> left, and charm. It's charm. But there are those two quarks that have, like, nicknames. I think it might be top and bottom that sometimes go as... Is it, uh, beauty and truth? I think it's that. Not. Don't quote me on it. Who received the Nobel Prize for his explanation of the photoelectric effect? That would be Einstein. What orbital has uh, the most seven possible orientations in space? I only know this because of that stupid, no, it's not stupid, that was mean, the atomic physics class that I took. And that would be F. What kind of animal did Schrodinger contemplate? That's a mouse. <laughs> no, that would be cat. Okay. Oh, okay, so it was De Broglie. De Broglie, oh, what did I miss? Green! Ah, green. Only 27% of players answered that correctly, so I don't feel as bad, but out of how many people that took this had a physics degree? That's, uh, don't tell anybody. Cool, well, 9 out of 10, that's not, that's not terrible, I'll take it. Let's do another one. Uh, the quantum quiz. Looks like we're sticking with quantum mechanics here. Oh, this one, there's another one that only got 5 out of 10 on average. Every good physicist knows that Max Planck was the first to elucidate the concept of a quantum, an integral part of quantum theory. Wasn't it Einstein, though, that coined the term quantum? Oh, no, he coined the term photon, I think. Uh, what are the units of the fundamental constant, the fundamental physical quantum. I'm assuming it's talking about h-bar, or h, I guess. That's joule second. Cool. <laughs> Off to a good start. Another important concept to the formation of quantum theory was Einstein's revolutionary explanation for the photoelectric effect, a phenomenon that seemed to clash with the classical wave theory of light. In particular, the contradiction lay in the fact that energy did not seem to be related to its amplitude, but instead to its frequency. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I always like to think of the photoelectric effect as like, uh, what they were doing before was essentially the equivalent of having like a brick wall and then hitting it a bunch of times with a wiffle ball bat and it doesn't matter how long you're going to do it, it's not going to knock away any bricks. But as soon as you change that to a sledgehammer, there you go. As soon as you got something with more energy. Yeah, okay. Uh, the revelation that light exhibited wave, particle wave duality was revolutionary. But it wasn't long before another physicist, Louis de Broglie, proposed that... God, this is so much reading. I need to lay down and count to ten. Proposed that, in fact, all matter exhibited wave particle wave duality. According to de Broglie, an object's wavelength depends on which of its properties, momentum, charge, energy, or acceleration. Uh, almost torn between two options, between momentum and energy. But when you go to trying to motivate, because you don't really derive the Schrodinger equation, you just you have to make a bunch of physical arguments that get to it. And one thing is you take uh, de Broglie's um, equation and you apply it to sort of getting like a momentum operator. Uh, 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna say so it it basically comes down to when you try to construct a wave packet for the first time. Um, so it's momentum. In quantum theory, there's a famous relationship named the Heisenberg indeterminacy principle. Who, in the right mind, calls it indeterminacy principle? Which says that two properties of a system cannot both be determined with R. This is the same question. This is uh, position and momentum. Famous Schrodinger equation can be said to be the backbone of quantum theory. The equation says that if you apply an operator to a wave function of a system, I feel like I was talking about this earlier, the result is simply the original wave function multiplied by the energy of the system. What is the name of the operator? Let's say it together, uh, ha uh, ha the Hamiltonian. It's kind of a tricky question because in the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian is built out of sort of like the Laplacian and some potential. But I guess, yeah, Hamiltonian's more encompassing, I guess. The Schrodinger equation was actually not the first successful attempt to describe the quantum world, quantum world, the world quantum mechanically. Another physicist had already achieved what Schrodinger did with his equation at an earlier time, albeit in a different manner. Who was that physicist? Uh, let's think. Well, Bald, Bald, Paul Dirac had his little notation, and then he came later with the Dirac equation, which was essentially like a relativistic explanation or extension of the Schrodinger equation. So that, I'm not going to say that. Niels Bohr was pretty classical. Einstein, definitely not. Heisenberg also has the Heisenberg representation. Duh, it's, it's Heisenberg, where you have like those time-dependent operators. In 1928, Paul Dirac, more, okay, Paul Dirac again, uh, formulated a wave equation that bridged quantum mechanics with special relativity. The Dirac equation applies to a specific set of particles that includes, uh, that's going to be electrons. Okay, because I think it was the Klein-Gordon equation that applied to photons. Could be wrong, though. The Dirac equation is an example of when theory predicts the existence of something that had not been discovered yet. Uh, as when Neptune's existence was predicted from the perturbations in Uranus's orbit. What did the Dirac equation predict? It is antimatter. Yeah, so the other one had to be electrons. I think it, it had to basically come down to the fact that when you construct uh, the Dirac spinners, they have like four components to it, essentially, that come up with like the different spins that the system could have. And for an electron, you know, you have up and down, but you had like two extra ones that could... Uh, that he sort of had to, it, it seemed like it was in an ad hoc way to get his equation to work, but in doing so it predicted um, antimatter particles that could complete the other spin parts. While Dirac showed with his equation that quantum theory and relativity are at least not incompatible, fully merging quantum theory of relativity would require the development of what is called quantum field theory. What was the first fully developed quantum field theory? QED, electroweak theory, QCD, or there is no fully developed? Uh, well, that's going to be QC, Q, 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 QED. You had, um, I mean, I feel like Dirac sort of worked on that a little bit, and then you had people like Schwinger and, uh, and Feynman come along. Yeah. So far, quantum field theories have been formulated for three of the four fundamental forces of nature. Which fundamental force has yet to be described by quantum field theory? Love. No. No, it's gravity. It's gravity. Thanks, John Mayer. Submit my answers. Uh, I got 100. Whew. Oh, God. Thank you guys for watching while we did we while I did this little fun trivia quiz thing quantum America yes uh, let me know in the comment section how you compared to my score got a nine out of ten on the first one and a ten out of ten on the second one that's a nineteen out of twenty that's a ninety five percent the other five percent is statistically insignificant 
If this quiz made you believe in life after love, then feel free to share. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you got that angstrom one, and I'll know if you're lying. Bye.